good afternoon or good morning, depending where you are in the world. But today we got someone very special on our channel, Pastor Leon Benjamin. And if you have not been to the Reawaken America tour, boy, have you missed out. Because when Pastor Leon Benjamin goes on stage, he lights it on fire. And he has got the biggest heart, beautiful man, beautiful family, but he has got energy like no tomorrow. So I really love Pastor Leon. So Pastor Leon, thank you for being here. This is the first time. Yeah. yeah God bless you, Bo. I know you've, you've been on my show on um, Be Alert. And I just thank you, man. Um, we, we're here right now, of course, in Tulsa, our church here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the real remnant church, hanging out with Clay. And uh, of course, we have a church in Richmond, Virginia, uh, the New Life Harvest Church, but they can go to the realremnantchurch.com and check us out. Uh, two churches, one vision, and uh, God is definitely moving, man. So thanks for having me on the show today. Oh, absolutely. People really need to hear your message. Uh, it's just complete message of hope. And that's kind of my whole point of this, giving people the understanding that God's got this. You know, yes, we have to be good stewards. We have to pray. You know, we have our job. But the bottom line is, you know, th all the horrible things we're seeing in the world, you know, that's very simple. Read John 10, 10, Satan comes to do all that. And then the other side of the equation is God comes to give us life, life more abundantly. So anything with a relationship to kill, steal, destroy, anything ugly and bad is is of the devil. And and you know we got you know the prince of the world is controlling everything. And so, but we have authority over him through the blood of Jesus. Yeah, and and look, we don't have to be afraid of forecasts that uh, prognosticate doom and gloom. We don't have to be. Uh, fearful and go hide, you know, in a in a bunker. Uh, we we our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our hope is in the Word of God, and our hope is amongst the brethren that are sanctified. Our inheritance and the stealthy way that the enemy has come to take from us everything that rightfully belongs to us. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the worlds and the people that dwell therein. But he also said that I would bless my people. The meek shall inherit the earth. Wait a minute. <laughs> what's going on with, with, with uh, what's supposed to be rightfully ours being stolen from us each and every day? It all goes back to, like I see my podcast, it's gone back to day one. This has gone back to the garden. You have to understand, we're going through the great redo, and it's a 6,000-year journey. <laughs> for God, a day is but a thousand years, right? So for us, like, God, why is this taking so long? But from God, it's like, a yeah, day is a thousand years. It's, it's, it's So he's, he's laid out his timelines on his perfect schedule. Why? Because with his perfect everything, we end up getting a perfect end result. But you're right. You know, the evil that's on the earth, and this literally goes back to the garden when Adam and Eve, God made everything, made everything. Yeah. Gave it to man and then give, made man at the end, gave it all to man, and then man gave it all away. So it's called, you know, Satan usurped our inheritance, stole it from us. And why? Because Satan's got no to dwell people. He's got, he was cast out of heaven, and him and a, you know, whatever, a third of the angels cast. Yeah. They got nowhere to dwell. So they want earth and we're in the way. Right. We are actually standing in the way, the church, uh, the ecclesia, the we, the we call it the visible and invisible. But the invisible uh, uh, has now become visible on the visible. That means God put his spirit in us and put us in a body. So we are legally here, rightfully so, as the heirs of this earth, and Satan and his minions are illegal, but they are really tricking a lot of people, Bo. They are yeah. hoodwinking a lot of people. A lot of people are fearful and unbelieving, and they are being used, I say, to bring a message of despair, of fear, of hatred and anger. And that's not the original uh, gospel message. No, that's not the original message. God God made everything good in those original, we call recreation, six days. You know, everything was good. And then on the sixth day, he made us. So we know we're good. 
very good. He says he made us on the sixth day. He said, that is very good, man, you know, human. And uh, we have some work to do, Bo. We have to really start to outline now, what is it right now that we need to hear to get us realigned again back into this, what I call wealth transfer? What what really needs to happen? And I, and I love I love the wisdom that comes from you. That's why I'm so glad to be here because I know a lot of things are going to be said today to get people realigned because some people are just out of the loop and they need to get back on course again. Well, let me ask you a question. You always go back, you know, it's like regardless of whatever you think, you always want to end up going back to the word. Okay, so there's, there's I'm going to, like one line. The wealth of the sinner, Proverbs 13, 22, the wealth of the sinners is laid up for the for the righteous, okay? Has that ever happened? Has has there ever been a moment in time where God literally has ripped away the wealth of the sinners and given it to the righteous, okay? One that I can think of, which is very clear, which is which literally happened when Israel got paid for 400 years of bondage, right? So whenever God intervenes, he 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 destroys the evil side, but he blesses the church. It's always a double-edged sword. But right now we've gone through hundreds, probably well, of this case, thousands of years. We have a money system they create out of thin air. And tell me that the world is not completely ensnared and, and, and controlled right now by a monetary system that is, in essence, because it's the truth is the truth. It's created out of thin air. So, and who's creating it? Okay. An evil regime that works for a fallen angel. And so Ooh. they've created all this money out of thin air. All this money exists. When we were young, not the world, but when we were like in the 70s, right? In the 70s, there wasn't there wasn't a billion dollars barely. Okay. We're in the quadrillions now. So, you know, the viewers need to understand we went from a droplet of money to an ocean of money. And the, and the understanding of that, as I've said before, it would take you, Pastor Leon, 12 days to count to a million, okay? Well, today we're at a quadrillion and we're at several quadrillion, okay? Which means that it would take you 31 million years not sleeping to count to a quadrillion. So the money supply has gone from a droplet to a massive ocean. And this ocean is upon everybody from mortgages student loans credit card payments auto pay it's just yeah. it's everywhere right and everybody feels like they need to pay you know they give you this money for free then you go hey don't worry about it just pay us back in the next 30 for the next 30 years that by definition is bondage expand upon that yeah we get the word mortgage the word morgue <laughs> or to mortify means to to deaden yeah. uh and and and, and so uh, the the slave uh, that the says the borrower is slave to the lender and 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 that that is in the book of proverbs and, and 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 so we were told in deuteronomy that's what he told the children of israel that Thank we you. would be the lender and not the borrower <laughs> that's right you see you see satan is the great deceiver and what did he do he he, he 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 switched the system yeah. And, and and so the, the 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 we call it the the kingdoms that he stole from the original Adam, he now has taken them over, and they have now come up under what is called the kingdom of darkness. And 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 so what Christ did, he came to take back that right that we now have when we believe that now we are now rightful heirs to those kingdoms. And so we we keep saying it out of the book of Revelations. There was a shout, right? An angel said, now the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. And so what man has to do now is hear the message, but they have to hear the good news. <laughs> they have to hear the right message to now lay stake upon or claim a, upon their rightful inheritance. And, and this is what I love about your show, because... If they miss this, they will, again, be thinking that money is coming out of thin air, okay, that that somebody just make up some fictitious amount and 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 have us going after something that is actually not real. And, and we got to get back into what is real. And I always 
is there's a little joke we have though real estate why do we call it real estate because it's the only estate that's real okay it's called real estate land and and resources the gold the silver G, the it's the scripture in the bible I think david quoted he says that if god were hungry he wouldn't tell us because he owns everything. The earth is the Lord's. He owns the cattle on a thousand hill. The gold and the silver are his. I mean, come on now. Why would God put his children on the planet and then tell us to starve ourselves? Well, I, I love the saying too, if you think about it, right? So we're, we know Christ has been here once and he's returning. So, and he's returning for what? For his bride, correct me if I'm wrong, but he's right. coming for his bride for a royal wedding, right? Right. So if Christ is coming back for his bride, who is the church, for a royal wedding, would he allow, very simple question, if when you were getting married or when I was getting married, would you allow your wife, soon to be your bride, soon to be, to be beat up, pummeled around, beat up, made to nothing, felt like nothing before a wedding or would you raise her up to the status to feel like she's a queen and this is the greatest day of her life which would it be come on i want her to enjoy this be beautified uh be loved on i mean come on not be sad not be dirty <laughs> not be you know fearful the bride is the bridegroom is coming Right. That is that is a celebration. That is not a place of what we what we call sometimes degradation and and destruction. No, that's totally the opposite. And 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 so we there's a lot of something. Somebody's been playing with our minds, Bo. Right. Somebody's been messing. I mean, really giving us a a uh, what is that? A bologna sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> well, think about right this this entity has been practicing and he's had 6000 years to practice okay yeah. he's this is an entity that doesn't die okay people need to understand what we're dealing with here this is a spiritual entity of evil that literally hates you hates yeah. you wants you dead why because you're in made in the father's image okay so you're made in the image of god you can reproduce and this you know the entities these angels can't do that so this angel hates you he wants you dead he's got nowhere to dwell okay so you have to understand who we're dealing with and because he doesn't die he's been on this earth for six thousand years so if you were on this earth for six thousand years uh pastor leon do you think you might learn how a man thinks how you know you might be able to figure out how to control man before he thinks because you basically the ecclesiastes says that which has been will be again so after about six thousand years you get pretty good to figure out man wouldn't you oh yeah by looking studying yeah seeing how we react to things how, uh, uh, yeah that's 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 what the bible talks about the manifold wisdom of god that we we are actually showing the angels so happens that they're also fallen angels how god uh responds to us through how we respond back to him so he's been watching us for quite some time and he knows I hate it like this. He knows where our weaknesses are. He he right. knows where we can trip up. Well, and and secondly, I was talking with uh, with my you know my wife and, and a couple of my, my children last night. And it was actually interesting because if you think about it, right, Satan knows that his he offended the father to such a degree he's never allowed back in heaven. That's correct, right? And yeah. so the so the Satan and the angels that were thrown out know for a fact they're never allowed back into heaven. So right. what is the one thing, so because they hate us and God, what's the one thing that they can do to be spiteful to the Father? Take as many souls to hell with them as possible. Am I wrong? That is that is so true. The word is called deceive, uh, to deceive or deception, um, to actually make a lie into a truth. That is deception. A lie is a lie is a lie all day long. And he is called the father of lies. And he's also called a murderer because anyone that can lie to you can also take your life or steal from you or rob from you. And, and uh, that, that, that is his, 
That is his nomenclature. He is the father of lies. He's a murderer. And this is all from the beginning. This is what our Lord told us in the Gospels. I love Jesus when he was on the earth. I love reading some of those lines when he goes, before Abraham was, I am. Oh, and they freaked out. Like some of the lines that Jesus comes up with are so perfect. It's just, you got to love it. He throws one or two lines at him and they just, their eyes want to bulge out of their head because they're so perfect. Jesus is, he's so beautiful and his perfect choice of words. Yeah. I, I love the fact that he did not, argue with satan he told him what the word said right yeah all, all the, it is written it is written it is written yeah. and and we don't have to argue with that 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 idiot neither <laughs> yeah. we we got other things to do we don't have to sit there and argue all day with a liar uh but but we we do have to get some knowledge though we do have to get some knowledge my people are destroyed because of the lack of knowledge uh, and they said also, I, th I think there's a scripture that says the children of this world are wiser than the children of light. Um, we, we we have principles that we should be practicing, Bo. Yeah. There are principles that we have to practice. And, and if we don't practice those principles, then we also will be stolen from. <laughs> and and taken from. And that wealth transfer that we talked about earlier in the show will never happen. The wealth the, of the sinner laid up for the just will never happen. Well, Be let's talk about that for a minute because the words are the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just, for the righteous. It's not, right. It doesn't say the wealth of the sinner is laid up for everybody. So understand what that means. It means that it's like we talk about, you know, the, the in the past, I've talked about, I'm sure you've talked about, you know, the five virgins and the other five virgins, so the ten virgins, and yeah. five of them wanted, you know, they prepared with oil and the other five did it. The point I'm trying to illustrate with that, and please expand upon this, but understand that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the righteous, for the just, for those that love God, those that prepare, those that follow the word. That's what the righteous, the just is, those. And so my point of all this is, if you believe that this, this world is messed up, if you believe that there's a lot of lies. If you're starting to wake up, listen to my podcast, listen to Pastor Leon, you're starting to realize, my gosh, there's something really wrong with the world, With the world, okay? God's not yeah. going to forsake his bride, okay? There's a royal wedding coming. God's going to bless his bride. I don't care if anybody says we're going to be correct because we've. this is what's written in the word, but God's not going to bless everybody. It's like when someone wins a lottery, most people within a year or two lose millions. They've lost it all. Why? Because they're not wise stewards. And so what I want to have under... And, you know, from a wealth transfer uh, standpoint, you got to understand if if God's going to bless something, He's going to bless He's going to bless His bride. But have you prepared? And then the words are very clear: Haggai two eight, the silver and the gold are mine, saith the Lord. So what does that mean? If God's going to bless the bride, He's going to flip the financial scales like He did in the temple, right? What's He going to flip? He's going to destroy the the paper fake fraudulent money system. And what's going to happen? The other side of the scale is going to rise. So gold and silver that's been suppressed for generations suddenly Ooh. finds breath and explodes vertical, right? And that's what's coming. And so the question is, you know, th th those that are listening, you know, well, you know, gold's expensive, 2,000 bucks, 20, you know, okay, I understand that for some people, okay? So same thing too, you no know, silver, let's look at that. Uh, do you have silver? Do you have $30? How about you don't get a couple cups of coffee for a few days and go buy at least one ounce of silver? Why? Because let hold on to something of God that God can then multiply for you, kind of similar to what happened, very similar to what happened with the God feed Jesus Christ feeding 5,000. He first needed two fish and five loaves of bread. Then the meal came. Then it multiplied. Yeah, he took it, he, 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 he breaked it, and then he blessed it, and then he gave it back to his disciples. And as they were distributing it out, it started multiplying. Notice right. it didn't multiply in Jesus's hands. It multiplied in his disciples' hands. Wow. The, those are the, that were distributing it out to the 5,000. Or in this case, it was actually 15,000. It was 5,000 men, yeah, but including women and children. You're talking about 15,000 people yeah. that it began to multiply. And God is just is looking for some disciples right now. Talk about, I, the, I, talk about the, the five virgins, you know, the, the dip, the prepared. Well, I, I'm prepared. looking at this right now, and I was reading this, and it says, The kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps 
and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. And they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, no substance. So this is where you're talking about the gold and the silver. We, 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 we got to go meet the bridegroom, which is Jesus. But before we meet the bridegroom, we got to have substance. And what they did with the fiat currency, which was making money out of thin air, was actually telling you, here's money, but it had no backing, no substance. The oil represents the backing in the lamp. Come on, wouldn't that be stupid? Walking around the streets all day, talking about, I see, I see, I see, in the middle of the night with no oil, no substance. So we're telling people, you see the gold. You see the silver. You don't see anything behind the money system that we have right now. 1970, it was changed from a gold back system to what is called fiat currency, which means you can print as much as you want. And it doesn't mean anything. Um, it's only by what we call when a person has confidence in a money system. See, this is what the BRICS are trying to do now, to take away the confidence of our money system by creating their own bricks system. And it's very funny. They're using gold <laughs> to back their system. Isn't that strange? Don't you think that's strange that they're using a substance like the 10 virgins were supposed to use? Five of them said, oh no, we're just gonna go around the streets. It's gonna get dark one day and we'll just make it in. Oh no, don't you be crazy. It says here that the, the foolish took no oil, but the wise, the wise, verse number 25, verse four, Matthew 25, verse four, the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. So the lamp is, the, is what we call the structure. The oil is the substance. And so, if the money system changes to a new structure, the wise will have substance. The foolish will have no substance with a structure. That's called fiat currency, by the way. A structure with no substance. I'm praying that those who are listening to you and to us right now will say, we don't want a structure with no substance. We want a structure, a lamp with oil. Not a lamp with no oil. We you know we were joking before the show about you know the, the, there's, a, there's like a big flood coming right and uh, this guy sitting in the house and the, and the and the truck pulls up hey there's a big flood coming hurry up get in the car we got to get out of here no no God's gonna take care of me right flood hits water's flooding his house he runs up on the roof uh, and then a boat pulls up no no God's got me don't worry about it and then a helicopter shows no no God's got me so you know the guys he guys drowns right. And what happens? The guy's like, I see, why are you here? And and uh, the guy's, well, you know, you said you're going to save me. He goes, I did. I sent you a, a pickup truck. I sent you a boat. And I sent a you boat? a helicopter. The point of the story is very simple. God's telling us through the word to prepare, okay? A storm is coming. A storm is coming, okay? This is going to be, uh, from a biblical perspective, this is the financial storm. This is the third seal of Revelation. This is the great economic collapse, okay? But it's not bad news. It's good news. Because why? They've used this fake money system to ensnare, enslave, and control you. It's a bondage system created out of thin air to bond, to embond. Spirit of pythos is what it is. It's bondage. He wraps around and he squeezes you to death, okay? Kim Clement had actually had a prophecy about that. It was a spirit of pythos that's upon the world right now, and he squeezes you and he holds you, and he, that's no different than what Israel was in bondage. They had chains chains on them. We've got the spirit of pythos on us, and it's basically squeezing you to death. So you feel like you got the money. You're not supposed to have the money. You're supposed to be blessed beyond measure, because we're the bride of Christ. We're, we're, we're made in God's image. He made everything for us, right? But the reason you don't have anything is because, oh, don't worry, God's going to take care of me. God's going to take care of me. But you need to be a wise steward and know that a storm is coming. A storm is coming. You can't stop what's coming. Expand it. Can anyone stop Revelation, pa Pastor Leon? You can't stop what's coming. Expand upon that. And so you can only have one of two things. We know Christ is returning. So which side of the fence are you going to sit on, right? Expand upon all that. Well, it, it, it said here 
that at midnight, come on, well, let's first talk about, they verse, in verse five, it says they, when the bridegroom took his time, the word is tarried, that means they didn't know what time he was going to come. It says they all slumbered and slept. And then at midnight, in the middle of the night, see, that's when the enemy uses the most what? Fear tactics. In the middle of the night, that's when people, come on, get afraid, get scared. Financial bondage um, happens in the middle of the night. But at midnight, a cry was made, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye to meet him. So was it about the gold or was it about the bridegroom? Which one is it? Is it about the house or is it about the bridegroom? Is it about your career or is it about the bridegroom? See, all of these things are what we call uh, means, whether it be the house, the car, the gold, the silver. The, it's not the end. The end is to meet the bridegroom. Right. On the financial perspective, it's not about it's it's about having God wants you blessed. But when it, when it all comes to you can't worship two masters. And so when the bridegroom show, shows up, you want you need to be willing to leave it all behind because none of it is none of it matters. It's just temporary because the goal is to be with Christ. But before Christ returns, you have to have means. You have to have blessings. You have yes. to have a roof over your head. We both, you know, right now, look above you. We have, we have roofs above our head. Why? Because you need finance for that. So don't be deceived by Satan. No, you know, we, we don't need money. No, no. The reason Satan is in such control of humanity right now, because he thinks he's got more money than God. And, be, and he's built this entire global enterprise of worldwide enslavement of pythos worldwide pythos enslavement yeah how did he do it pastor he did it with the money yeah yeah and so here it is the all the virgins got up and trimmed their lamps that means they looked at their infrastructure and the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out. So here's one group depending on one infrastructure. And here's another group depending on another infrastructure. And so the, the wise said, go build the infrastructure like we did. We're not depending on fiat anymore. We're not depending on money made out of thin air. We have actually substance, whether that be gold, silver, or whatever it is, but we have substance in our infrastructure, which gives us the ability to go out, right? Because what the enemy wants us to be trapped. So we got these 15 minute cities. We got the electrical vehicles where you can only go but 300 miles and then you got to go <laughs> recharge. But those who have the other infrastructure can go as long as they can to go meet the bridegroom. Notice, they were not limited. The, the, the wise virgins were not limited on how far they could go to meet the bridegroom. But the foolish were limited because they had no oil. They had no substance. So they had to go, what did, what did the wise say? Oh, no, lest there be not enough for us and you but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. So that, that means that the wise went and bought substance when it was time to buy it. Now, this is what I just heard. Okay, so now let's layer in understanding on what you just said, okay? But those that were, can you repeat that last line? Reread that last line, but those that what? It says, but the wise answered saying, no, I mean, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Now, what does Revelation say? Apply this to Revelation and end times. It's very clear. You will not be able to what? Buy or sell without the mark of the beast. This Boom. is scriptural. So now apply that to the last line, put it together. Put it, give them, give the uh, an, an understanding so people get it. What what happens? What happens is if we put our faith in a dilapidated system, this is what the Antichrist is going to do. So he's going to force you and I to take a mark. Notice to take a mark, take away our ability to buy and sell. 
So here's a trade-off. Do you want the mark or do you want the ability to what? Claim your inheritance, what is already provided for you, the gold and the silver, the oil, everything belongs to cattle on a thousand hills or take the mark. That is deception. That and is pure witchcraft. And to make you think that I have taken away your ability to buy and sell. And the only way you have now, the only choice you have now, this is the Antichrist. The only choice you will have is to take a mark and put it in your hand or your forehead. That means to control your mind and your ability to what? To produce, to produce, to be productive, to take away the way you, your, your innovation, which is your ideas, and to take away your ability to produce or to innovate, uh, uh, to, 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 to bring what we call products and services. And, and so that is pure deception, Bo. If, well, if I, mean I can convince you, Bo, that you cannot come up with an idea and create something and then put it on the marketplace to, to sell it, I just robbed you of your inheritance. I just told you that you can't think of an idea. The, the word is called concept, to conceive. The, uh, to, to sept means idea. So concept means to bring forth an idea, a thought. So I'm robbing you of your ability to think for yourself. This is what the Antichrist system is going to do. It is going to deceive the people, hoodwink, witchcraft the people into thinking they cannot think for themselves. So you got to take the mark. Well, and let me expand upon that because, well, if there's going to be, a, it's not even once you take the mark, it changes, I, I believe it's going to change your DNA because also to take the mark, you're going to have to deny Christ. Okay. So understand what happened, uh, you know, in the past four years, that was, not, it was just a precursor to what's coming in the future because there's a very specific thing you must do and please confirm if i'm wrong but you must deny christ as lord and savior okay and then secondly if if you choose to do that let's leave it at that then the bottom line is christ when he returns he will say i do not know you and you will be immediately like there's no going back from that point okay so once you take it there's no going back and so now this layers into what we just talked about what did christ say to the five that didn't prepare let's this is literally the same thing Matt, the, the five virgins that didn't prepare is literally describing what's written in Revelation. So what did Christ say to the five that didn't prepare, that didn't have oil in their lamps? Okay, look at verse number 10, Matthew 25 and 10. It says, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. The door was shut. So that means there's going to come a period of time where your buying will be too late. <gasps> we told you to buy. We told you to do this now before the storm, before the darkness, before the midnight. Um, Jesus said it like this in the Gospels. Work while it's day. For night cometh where no man can work. And so he here is the wise who worked in the right hour. And here is the foolish who worked at the wrong. They did the right thing at the wrong time. Okay. So they were. And so when they went in, afterwards came also the virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Open, open to us, Lord. And they even said, Lord, Lord, meaning relationship. They said, owner, owner, the word. Lord, we get the word curios, or in the Old Testament, Adonai, which means master, master, or owner, owner. And, and but he answered and said in verse 12, Matthew 25 and 12, verily I say unto you, I know you not. Wow. They did the right thing. Then they do the same thing as the, as the, as the wise. They went and bought, but they did it at the wrong time they did it at their own time not the lord's time they weren't listening they did it they they we call it being out of sync yeah they were not synchronized with the prophecy and what and what does the state um what does the state the lord does nothing 
before first speaking through what? His prophets. His. He reveals his secrets. Have you not heard? Him. Have you not heard the prophets? Have you not heard what I speak of on our channel? Do you not listen to the prophets? Because it's very clear God does nothing before first speaking through his servants, the prophets. And this is, I'm not the only one describing and talking about God's about to flip the financial scales. I've been doing it probably longest than anybody or than a lot of people. But now there's a lot of prophets saying the same thing. And a lot of prophets are saying the same thing. What does that mean, Pastor Leon? Well, the, the Bible says, let every word be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. <laughs> Not some word, every word be established. And for something to be established, it has to be agreed upon. That's what Jesus said, that where two or three are gathered together in my name as what? Touching, I am there in the midst. And if, if two of you shall agree on the earth, it says two shall agree on the earth, I will do it. And so the coming to pass of this end times is because not only you, Bo, but another one, myself, or maybe we came into agreement. Right. I'm telling you, because you would, because if you knew you were speaking against the Lord and the Lord literally tell you there's no wealth transfer coming and you're saying there's a wealth transfer coming, you're going against God. And you, because you just, you, you know, in your heart, like when you, when I listen to you, I know it's the truth because you have a clean and good heart. Okay. We're all human. We all screw up. Okay. But bottom line is, you know, you have a good heart. Your, your heart chases the Lord. Okay. And that's, and that's we have this. discernment. And then, well, we, then you got, then you got the written word. Then you got the written word, right? So that's why I say, if you take the written word and you layer it with a prophetic, so the prophetic lines up with the written word and you have several prophets now saying, what's written that's called validating you know that's that's just like a second third fourth fifth witness and then i take the math and show you how the math is perfect relative to our timeline it's incredible the layers of of confidence that we end up getting and it's and it also goes back to to uh uh, Matthew uh, chapter uh, 16 where Jesus says upon this rock I'll build my church that word church there is ecclesia it yes, means right. called out ones but also in Jesus's day they also know they knew that ecclesia ecclesia meant senate and I'm Let just I would, but expand upon that because a lot of people are confused about that line. A lot of people will read that line and think, oh, they know Peter's the rock. About you understand, Jesus was speaking about the revelation. He was speaking about himself. He was speaking the revelation of what he's saying. He goes upon this rock, me, I will build my church. That was exactly what Christ was saying. He wasn't pointing at anybody. Expand upon that. Right. He was telling Peter because he asked all of them, remember in that context, who do yeah. men say that I am? So the mm -hmm. whole foundation of the rock is based upon who do men say that I am? So some say that he was what? John the Baptist. Some yeah. say that he was Isaiah. Some say that he was Elijah. And then he says, who do you say? And, they, and nobody said anything except for one person. <laughs> and, he said, and Peter says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, Peter, verily, verily, I say unto you, flesh and blood has not revealed that, but my father, who is a king in heaven. And then he says, I say unto thee, Peter, rock, you know, Petra. Okay, I'll build, I'll build my church, Petros, okay, I'll, I'll build, a, a, based upon your confession, yeah, I will revelation. build my church. Yeah, based on your confession, based on your revelation that the Lord, my Father gave you, that's what I'm going to build my church on, on my own shoulders, because every, please listen, every single man that's ever walked this earth has fallen. You cannot build a kingdom on the shoulders of an entity that has that has weak shoulders and falls. It's only built on the word and the word. And you go back to the first line, you know, and in the beginning was the word and the word was with 
God. God. And the word was God. Was God. And the word was God. <laughs> Love it. Talk about powerful. This is like incredible. So you have to understand the time at hand is critical. We talk about the five virgins prepared, five didn't prepare. Christ is not coming back. I know there's, you know, there's all, you know, pe people don't know the day or the hour, okay? I am not protesting to know the day or the hour because no one does. It's written. But it also doesn't say anywhere in there where Matthew states this five times. Matthew never said no one knows the year. Trust me, just like we know this is the year God's going to intervene upon taking down Mystery Babylon, okay? We all know whether it's like it's so close, whether it's whatever. We know it's close. Mystery Babylon's about to fall. It's going to fall the financial system. That's what we're here telling you, okay? What I want people to understand is you need to prepare. That's why we're talking. But Christ is not coming back. I want to be really clear here and see what, just what your opinion is. But Christ is not coming back. He's not telling us to prepare now because he's coming in two, three hundred years from now. No. He's coming sooner rather than later. And my calculations are pointing a lot sooner rather than 100 to 200, 300 years from now. So be not deceived. And I know yourself, I know at least three, four other prophets that are very uh, renowned prophets, all are in agreement and they've stated things that Christ is coming sooner rather than later without putting sp specifics on this. It's not 100, 200, 300 years from now. And why I'm saying that is because of the virgin story. You got to be, which of the five are you? Expand please, Pastor Leo. Yeah, there's, the, the word is called diligence. Um, we are to make our calling and election sure. And diligence always puts you in the now category and not in the later category. <laughs> so if, you. If, if, if you are making your calling and election sure, you don't want to be later. You want to be now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And, and so those who always put off what they could do today for tomorrow, end up being the ones, as I hate to say it, caught with their pants down. <laughs> they end up being caught unawares. And they go, man, I wish I would have, could have. I wish I would have listened to Bo. Oh, God, I wish I would have listened to, to uh, Pastor Leon. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. And there's all these well-wishers out there, you oh, know? Yeah. And and they and they always says, you know what? I was going to do that, but you know what? I got busy with, you know, taking out the garbage. I was folding the clothes. I was, <laughs> I, I was watching uh, the news, and I just didn't think that I had to do my own due diligence. I was in real estate, so I know about this. Do you know if you didn't sign the contract at a particular time and hour, that contract would be null and void? There were stipulations in the contract that said, if you got to do it at this time, this hour, this moment, or oh, that contract does not have to be honored. And in our minds, and I want to talk about some of these lazy Christians just for a moment. Stop being lazy. Get up off of your rump and do your own research. Do your homework. Don't just listen to us. Be like the Bereans in the Bible. They didn't just take Paul for his own word. We're not telling you just to take our word, you know, Bo's word of mine. Go do your own research. Can't you see the signs of the times? This is what he told even Nicodemus, who came at night, <laughs> you know, to ask Jesus about the wisdom that he had. And he said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Come on. He says, what's wrong with you? You're the highest class of, of teachers, and you can't you can't tell what's born of spirit and what's born of, 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 of the earth, what's born spiritually, what's born naturally. You can't. And when you look out in the weather and you see a red cloud, what do you say? It's going to rain, right? And, but you can't tell. You can't tell the signs of the times. Come on, Nicodemus. The signs of the times are right in front of us, Bo. And mm -hmm. anyone that wants to be ignorant of that, they're like Nicodemus who came to Jesus at night. You must be born again. You must have this discernment, which comes from above and not from beneath. Earthly wisdom will get you stuck with Satan. I'm going to say it one more time. Earthly wisdom will get us stuck with Satan. But godly wisdom, which comes from above, will get us out of here, away from him at, at the right time. Not too late, not too early, but right on time. And I, 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 want, to, I want to make sure that, that those that are listening will pray right now. God, give me this heavenly uh, wisdom. 
Give it to me, Lord. Get, let me receive it right now. I don't want to be stuck with Satan and those five foolish virgins. I don't want to be stuck with them. I want to be with the people of God. Mm. Amen. Woo. I want to ask, I, um, since we're on this topic, I want to ask you a question. If you could read, or I'll read it for you, but if you want to pull up Leviticus 25, 9 through 10. If you can pull okay. that up. And I'll, and then I'm going to go through a Kim Clement prophecy with an under, to, give, to give an understanding or an explanation of a 14-year-old prophecy. And Kim Clement was the gentleman who prophesied that Clay Clark and well, Donald would be president and Clay Clark would be doing what he's doing with a Reawaken America tour and that yes. they would be together, okay? And so now we speak on the Reawaken America tour, how blessed is that? But how awesome is this, that this is a prophetic word 14 years ago. And on this, I'm going to show you this, but it's kind of really exciting because this past Saturday, uh, literally, uh, so this past Saturday on the 23rd, God gave me the revelation of the 14-year-old Kim Clement prophecy prophecy and why this is such an important time we're, we're living on right here. So go ahead and read Leviticus 25, 9 through 10. Okay, I'll read it here. This is out of the King James Version. It says, Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. Verse 10 says this, and ye shall hallow the 50th year, 5050, and proclaim liberty, liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. Now. Let that soak in, everybody. And then, secondly, the key word that we referenced in there, Scripture was the 50th year and the word Jubilee, the two key words, 50th year and Jubilee. Now, let's listen to this prophecy. It's about a, it's about a minute a minute long. So let me, let me get this going here. And God said, between the 70 and 100 days, it shall begin, it, the strangulation and the destruction of this will begin. And it is going crazy. It is manifesting throughout America because it is dying. Now you may not understand spiritual warfare and Diablo and Satan, Satan and demons and darkness, but it waits for an attraction. It waits for an invitation. And as I've said, there's been great division. But also it was spoken of that beginning January 21st, there would be a period in between 70 and 100 days the spirit of Pythos will be destroyed if the people act accordingly. This spirit is doing its utmost to destroy as many states as possible, make its mark. It'll be leaving and we'll show that to you today. I wore this purposefully. It's the gold. And I'll explain that in a few minutes because he spoke to me about watching the gold as a sign. What I want to now go through is which year, because this is 14 years ago, January 21st is what he spoke of. So Roe v. Wade became law January 22nd, 1973. 50 year, as you just read, started or ends specifically, the 50th year would be January 22nd, 2023. The very last day of the 50-year jubilee, when does God show up? The very last minute of the last second, the midnight hour. So the last moment in time would be January 21, 2024, because January 22nd of this year was start of the 51st year. January 22nd of this year. Uh -huh. Started the 51st year of Roe v. Wade. So the very last day, the very last day, a possible Leviticus cycle point for re reference to Roe v. Wade because that was the root of all this evil in the United States. Because we turned from God. God wasn't with us. Look what happened, right? Now that God is with us, we've overturned Roe v. Wade. God is with us. Who can stand against us? Against us if God be for us. Yeah, before us. 
So, seven, and he said 70 days from January 21. So, God revealed to me that the year 2024, specifically, well, this, Jan this past January 21 was the year Kim was prophesying about. Wow. 70 days from January 21 is this coming Sunday resurrection. So that would be the start of the destruction of Pythos. God. And the hundredth day is the last day of Passover. Because Passover starts on the 22nd, last eight days. So that will be April 30th, the very last day of Passover. So from, from resurrection to the last day of Passover, the spirit of Pythos will be destroyed in America. What does that mean? It means that God is going to move upon the world. Christ isn't returning next in April. What I'm showing is we're going to see biblical intervention, godly intervention based on a 14-year-old prophecy of Kim Clement. This is incredible what's about to happen. And let me ask you, Pastor Leon, what happened at Passover? Was there a wealth transfer? Oh, my God. Uh, the history of Israel coming out of Egypt, it said the Egyptians, the the Israelites spoiled the Egyptians. <laughs> okay. That word that literally means that they bankrupted the Egyptian economy. Jubilee. Woo! And they walked out with the gold, the silver. They the word they used in King James was borrowed. They borrowed of the Egyptians clothes and purple and lip but it wasn't the real term we use today as far as borrowing to pay back no the egyptians were so scared of the israelites on that passover of god <laughs> the, the angel of death showed up killed precision strikes the only the firstborn of every family including beasts animal ever it was precision strike they must have been freaking out for what just happened they're like get out of here get out of here get out of here <laughs> and, you know and whatever you want check this out whatever you want take it it's yours get out of here get out of here just just leave us alone. And what did Kim say? What's look for the sign? What's the sign? What do you have on his wrists? Gold. The gold. See, see how perfect all of this is lining up right now? This is incredible. What's what God's gonna do? And God moves on his feasts. So it's you know, it's such a pleasure to have someone you know to speak with who really knows the word. Because that's what you, you really know the word. And so it's really great to have somebody just the second witness to what's written. Because this is this stuff is written. And this happened in Ecclesiastes. That which has been will be again. Remember, Jesus Christ, he used the words written in the Old Testament. In the wilderness. In other words, the Old Testament has complete validity. God's actually using, Jesus Christ used the words written in the Old Testament to counter Satan's temptations right absolutely absolutely he quoted out of deuteronomy he quoted out of deuteronomy it's it is written man shall live by 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 bread alone but by every word that proceeded out the mouth of god he, yeah. he, it is written thou shalt not tempt the lord thy god all of that is in the old testament right yeah it's 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 it, 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 it was amazing out of the pentateuch of all you know the first five books of the bible jesus quoted to what to validate, to validate everything that he was going to do would fulfill everything that was shadowed in the Old Testament. Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament. So the Old Testament is called the shadow, but the one who made the shadow is the New Testament. <laughs> Thank you. So I do, I want to fin that, that this is fantastic. It's been such a pleasure speaking with. You. This is so fun. This is this is great. I'm not, I know my viewers are going to love this. I want to finish on this note, and then 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 we can tell people how they can reach you and find find you at your church and everything. But let's finish on this because let's go back to Kim Clement because you know he's he is 
probably probably the, the rock star of our generation of of prophets uh, yes. because he was out there speaking before anybody was out there doing anything exactly and so listen to so we just had looks the sign was he said look look for gold for the sign but he's now in this prophecy he actually says you know look for the sign look for the sign and listen to the word he says as the sign of when this all begins because what is this week and it's resurrection weekend right so the march 31st and listen what kim clement specifically says look for the sign of when all of this is supposed to begin so here we go have stood and said moment in time where we're going to see incredible signs, miracles, and wonders, things that we cannot explain. Uh, when God intervenes, the impossible becomes what? Possible. Amen. All things are possible to them that believe. Amen. Yeah. So, and and this, this, this resurrection season coming up is, is God's already been talking to his people. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare the way. And we know the way because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. What a beautiful finish to this. Thank you so much. Pastor, how can people find you? I'll put your links up below this interview as well, too. But how can people find you? What a pleasure speaking with you. This was truly a blessing. Thank you. Yeah, they can go to therealremnantchurch.com. They'll be able to find us in Tulsa and also our church in Virginia. Two locations, one vision. But they go to therealremnantchurch.com. Of course, they can find me on Twitter and Facebook, on, on Rumble, uh, they can find us there. We're also on Truth Social. They can look up Leon Benjamin on Truth Social. We're, we're, we're there too as well. Thank you, Pastor Leon. So God bless you, your family. Uh, I will see you in June at uh, the Reawaken, if not sooner. <clears throat> so thank you and God bless. All right. God bless you both. Thanks for having me. Hi, this is Bo Polney. And after thousands of requests, this is my official announcement. This is a heads up and a first glimpse of what I have been working on. I have been working on a book. This book is a prophetic understanding of God's perfect timing from creation to his return. It's going to be explosive. This is the first book I've ever written and it will explain and illustrate with beautiful full color graphics of God's timing of events into the end of the age, the end of days. After reading it, you will want to keep this beautiful book on your coffee table and share it with all of your friends and family. I'm telling you, it is amazing and you're going to love it. This book is going to open your eyes to the present day events and how they are occurring with mathematical perfection as they directly fulfill events prophesied in Revelation over 2,000 years ago. God speaks through his word, 
We know that he also speaks through his servants, the prophets, and yes, he does speak through numbers. If you want to see how truly perfect his timing is, and the specific calculations he has revealed to me about our future into the end of the age, this book has all the incredible details. Are you ready to see the cover and a glimpse of inside images? Here you go. I doubt there's a book anywhere in the world like this one. It illustrates God's perfect timing from creation to the book of Revelation, including the four horsemen of the apocalypse, the seven seals of Revelation, the great American eclipses, the coming great Egyptian eclipses, the coming aliens, yes, we talk about aliens, the rise of Antichrist and the mark of the beast, the coming rapture, and all the way to the likely timing of Christ's return, and much, much more. The mathematical calculations are beyond any human probabilities, clearly illustrating the end of days was written from the beginning by the hand of God. This book has a lot of surprises and will open your eyes as to how truly great our God is. I believe it's gonna blow your mind and get you excited and prepared for the times ahead. It'll change the way you look at recent events in the world. It'll give you the power and understanding of how long we really have into the end of days and how all things are working together for good. That's why after reading this book, you're gonna to begin to see how Revelation, like the Bible, is actually the good news as all things are manifesting in his perfect timing. So, how can you be the first to get your very own copy? Well, there's a link below this video. You can be the first to pre-order it and get it as soon as it comes out in April. And if you're one of the first 300 people to pre-order this book, you can receive a 30% discount by simply entering the code 777 at checkout. There's also a link for pre-orders on our website, so be sure to use that discount code. And yes, the book will be available on Amazon. However, no discount will be there. This is Bo Pony. I love you. Jesus loves you. And I know you will love this book. Thank you so much and God bless.